you come to Houston. Yeah. You move with your brother, right? Yeah, that's what my you, brother. Okay, so what, what was your first thing to do? To get a job, or did you start the rapping then? Like, what was the first thing you did? Was it a culture shock? Like, when you first came Really, to really, really, when I first, first got to Houston, the first night I got here, I stepped out. Um, my, one of my homies I went to high school with, he was down here. Damn. So, he, I had just let him know, like, like yeah, I'm in Houston. He's like, are you in Houston? You know, he like, he come to this event. So I went to the event um, on Main Street. Mm. So when I got in the event and I just saw like, I just felt at home. Like it just felt love. It was like. You ain't have to wear it. Like, it you, wasn't you, no tension. Just, okay, so that same type of event couldn't possibly happen. Exactly. In yeah, Chicago, exactly. Yeah. And so you like, damn. I'm like, damn, this how it is. And then it was some bloods in there. It was some crips. Ain't nobody trying But they weren't beefing, you know what I'm saying? So I saw it like, okay, like I knew it was bloods. Damn, we don't got bloods in crips in Chicago. But, you know, the, the, the bandana flags and all that, so I'm yeah. like, oh, there must be bloods and crips, you know? Then I saw people, they was kind of weird, just different, just, everybody was they self. It wasn't no- nobody was- Yeah, it yeah. wasn't no tension, it was love. So like, nobody sassed me up, nobody asked me where I was from and nothing like that, it was just like, People was nice. That Southern hospitality was real. Like, what's up, bro? What's up? You know, so I'm like, man, like, they speaking to each other now like this. Man, nigga, you don't even have to know a nigga. Nigga will pass you square everything. All that. You yeah, know what I'm saying? That type so, of they ain't like that in Chicago. So, when I came down here and saw that vibe, I was like, damn, I, I love this. So, I got right up with the promoter. Because mm. I saw people oh, had... That 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 particularly that I saw people had their tables up, they they they, booths. they booths. Yeah, you yeah. know how it is down here. It was love, like it was a real event, a little concert I going on. Hey, bro, this what you gotta do. Right. So I hollered to promote. I'm like, man, what? I'm like, I got a business. I got a clothing line. What I gotta do to get a spot? To get a spot. So um, she was like, Bad Breezy, shout out to Bad Breezy. We ain't really, we don't really mess with each other no more. But it's all love. She good. She gave me my first opportunity down okay. there. So um, she she just told me like, this the next event. This what you gotta do. Sell five tickets, and yeah, you in here. That ain't bad. No, I wasn't cheap, like $40 or something like that? $15. That ain't bad. Not at all. So I just bought the tickets out. I was just for the say, I just would have bought them hoes yeah. and paid them hoes yeah. for somebody. I just bought them and was like, all right, I got my slot, and I started getting ready. Mm. So um, the first show that I did, I set up that, man, it's crazy. Um, Megan Thee Stallion was this before she was on. Before she made Thee Stallion. Yeah. Okay. Um, Don Tolliver, before he was... Don Tolliver. When you seen these people, did you, did, okay, that was before that time, but how, now looking back, how did you realize, like, damn, that was making a stallion back then? Yeah, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't think she'd be, I ain't think that for her, like, I, cause it was a lot of artists when I saw, yeah. Don Tolliver, I knew I was back, like, that nigga a star. Like, I just knew it. His stage presence, everything. I'm like, that nigga a star. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, is a star, like. It's only a matter of time I knew with him. Toby was there. Toby won the, the event. The, 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 uh, the right. Rayleigh, yeah. That dude he ball. won the event. This before he got the co-sign from ET and all them. Like, mm -hmm. So I just saw like everybody was on their own thing, doing their thing, being their thing. So with no Right. Yeah. So I started my I started pushing my clothes. Okay. And I just started doing every event that she had. Okay. I was popping up at it. And then I just started networking. So I started getting up with the underground artists and putting yes. them in my clothes. So now they want a video, like they love my energy. You know what I'm saying? Like, like man, we they, they liked how I hustle. Cause they was like, like nigga, you get down. Like, cause I'm walking up to everybody. Yeah, um, it's like that in, in the city though. My nigga, if you certain, you yeah. do be in certain circles. Like my nigga, cause they respect. They yeah, respect the hustle, right? they respect that. Like, 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 man, I got it. And they liked my clothes. I was making some dope stuff. So they liked it, it was different. Mm -hmm. I brought the Chicago flavor down to H -Town. to H Town, and like it was y'all real colorful. Y'all like the colors, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. so I saw that and took what well, we hit my flavor, put my and logo, my, and, and started putting, making it real colorful. I started painting on the clothes and stuff, and, and all that, and it just took off. So, um, like I did that, then I got connected with a professor, and started speaking, and she the rest is history. Okay, so. Did you come out with the book first before you came out with? Mm -hmm. I did. So okay. I started. I started the clothing line, and I was doing speaking. Okay. So when my wife got pregnant, okay, with my daughter, okay, 
because this was about three years ago, like the 2017. Okay. Like the the the, the t-shirt money, don't get me wrong, it was good, but it was like $20 t-shirts, you know what I'm saying? I got to sell five shirts to make $100. Yeah. You know, and then like the return to customer, not so good. Okay. You know, if you sell weed, like niggas need their weed, like every, every two days, every, every two, day. three days, yeah, you know, yeah. they coming back. Yeah. If I sell you a t-shirt, you, you might not come back to next month. Exactly. Okay, I can do so that. So it was like, I, I got to always meet new people. My return to customer wasn't really, yeah. I saw that, I started analyzing the business and was like, okay, I got to do it on the way. So when it was just me, like I, I could do this. I ain't gonna lie, it's hard to pay bills out shirt, man. Yeah, it's hard. You so I mean? and I and I'm like, man, we we got a, me and my lady got a place. So I had to start thinking long term. So I'm like, okay, let me start speaking 100 percent because I knew I'm like. By that time, I knew I had a real skill, but I had yet to perfect my craft. Mm. I was just still winging it. So I was like, I talked to my wife, and I was like, man, um, I need to take a step back from the clothes and just go 100 percent into speaking. Mm. And um, we took a hit on the money side because the t-shirt money wasn't coming in no more. Mm -hmm. But I went and volunteered at the college, at Lone Star College. Mm. I went and volunteered four days after week, eight o'clock to four o'clock. I'm up there every day. And I just watched this professor, uh, Mr. Johnson, Dr. Johnson. Black guy, you know what I'm saying? Cool. It's like my big. I ain't gonna lie, that was time consuming too, bro. Yeah. Every day. Everybody was looking at me like I was crazy. Okay. Family. Especially her family, my wife's family. Because there's not no money involved. Right, like, you got a baby on the way. You need to be making some money. What you doing? Mm -hmm. So I'm going here every day ain't making no money. Eight to four. But I did that for a semester. After that semester, I was cold. Like, cold with the speaking. Like, now I'm, like, cold with it. Where, like, I, could, I, I hold lectures and stuff at universities. I ain't never been to college before. And I, they paid me to come do lectures. So it was that training that I got. I saw how to become like I'm a visual guy. I ain't gonna lie. At that moment, did you say to yourself, "That means anything I put my mind to, I can do it." Yeah, and that's how the book came. That's how the music came. That's how the book came. So okay, so the book came first. The book came first, and this all derived from speaking, public speaking, public speaking, with a mix of your past life type. Exactly. Yeah. That's so, a lie. So the book, I was speaking. And the guy from the publishing company, he came to me and was like, do you got a book? I'm like, no, nah, I don't got no book. I need one, though. He like, you will have one next month. This was December of 2018. No, nah, December of 2017. In one month? Literally one month. The book came out last year. The book came out January 2019. Okay, so when he told you you have a book in one month, you like, what the, What you mean? You know, I'm like, because you, at this time, I'm a... I'm assuming it's a new venture for you, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like uh, writing a book was like a lifetime goal type thing. Like something yeah, I'm gonna do. Yeah, you know, because I'm working on one now, and I feel like I just don't. I just don't know how. I, I guess I don't know the actual format or process of that. That's what. Doing. Yeah. So it's so much that you don't know. You just see a book. Like damn, how am I gonna get a book done? Yeah. So I got up with the company. This was on a Sunday. Mm. I got up with them Tuesday, and sat down. We had a meeting. <laughs> We came up with the title at that meeting. And um, 30 days later, I had a number one new release on Amazon. Damn. Okay, but had the book had been written? No, nah, we wrote the book and everything in 30 days. Wrote the book, got the cover, did all that. I booked, I set up a tour and everything in 30 days. And you actually made money off the book? I'm still making money off of it to this day. That shit crazy. That's wild. That's good, bro. Yeah, I'm still. I make money off that in my sleep. Like it's passive right now. That's live. We'll talk. We'll get into that in three minutes. But okay. So what came up with the name Transform a Nation? Like what? Like so, I, I guess I can assume just from the outside looking at what it would be about without reading it at that for now. So um, from when I was speaking, I had a nonprofit called Motivational Artists, right? And um. So when I used to go to the high schools, the colleges and speak, the things I used to speak on was financial literacy, mm. entrepreneurship, mm. personal development mm. and family value and structure. Mm. So those were my four key pillars. So I, I, I built all my presentations, all my speeches, around everything those around those four philosophy. things. Mm -hmm. So when I sat down with the publishing company and pretty much told them like, this is what I do. And I'm like, um, he was like, what's your goal? And I was like, 
I just want to transform minds. So he was like, it sounded like you on a mission to transform this, you know, this this, this, nice. this, this nation. Yeah. So um, he was like, transformation of a nation. And I'm like, I don't, I don't got no ring to it. You know, I ain't like that. But from now I'm like, I'm like, um, I'm like, I'm just trying to transform this nation for you. And that's when he was like, transform the nation at the title. I'm like, I like it. And that's how he came up with the title for trans. So it was basically just from what I had been doing and work that I had been putting in. Okay, so every day, like, you got a whole book out. This is something maybe I would say seven, eight years you would have never even thought. Never even thought about it. So now you got a book out. Like, tell me what that felt like first. Like, damn, this is my book I wrote. It's my name on it. Man, honestly, everything happened so fast. Like, I was still shocked. Like, I was still riding. Like, like when I first got it, I was like, man, I really got a book. You know, like, because it, you know, I heard you working on the book. I'll tell you how I did the book off camera. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll put you on, on yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make it easier for you. Yeah. But, like, what? when I found out that it wasn't as hard as I thought it was and I got through it like this and got the book, like, from the structure and everything and had it, I didn't really... Um, I'm a real humble, humble person. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I ain't really think it was that big of a deal, honestly, until I, I started going out. From, that that coming from where we come from, yeah, that's a big deal, bro. Because like, like right now today, how many people you think back home that you grew up with have a book, bro? None of them. And that's what's that's when I that's when it hit me. The reception I started getting from everybody else when I made the announcement. Like, got a book. Like, you know, it was just like, man, it went viral. That's yeah. how it became a number one um, new release on Amazon. Because it went viral. Like, it just took off. You know what I'm saying? And um, Once you got to the number one release, what was your mind then? Like, damn. First of all, I never thought I would even write a book. You man, went from man. not thinking that you could even write a book or, like, a book to being number one. Like, how does that feel, bro? It felt, it felt amazing, bro. Like, like I said, I still didn't really, I was like on a high, like I was just like, like, I was like riding a high type, you know, like a feeling like, you know, when you, like I came down, man, because everything just happened so fast, it was like that. And um, by me speaking, I had already had connections at colleges and universities and in different cities. So I just started making phone calls. To do the tour with to the To do book. the tour, yeah. That was smart. I just started making phone calls. I got a book I want to come out there. I got a book I want to come out there. And it just started booking. So I did two fast city book tours. And I set them up myself. I funded them all. How did you? You drove to each one of those? Drove, drove and flew. So you, you made your own tour. Yeah. That's yeah, I put my own tour together. So, like, I was still, you know, this is something my wife always tell me. Like, she like, um, by me going through so much pain and so much heartache at such a young age, like, I never really get too high or I never really get too low. Mm. I'm always just kind of chill. So even when things going amazing around me, I just be chilling. When things going horrible around me, Same thing. I still be chilling. Damn. So I had to, like, like teach myself how to feel it, like, how to really. So from last Embrace. year. Embrace. Yeah, what I was going through. Like, so, like, I'm a, I'm a workaholic when it comes to my business and my brand. So I'm just always. That's how I even reached out to you. Like, I do all the reaching out. I do all the. The connecting and the networking. So, like, once the book was out, it's like, okay, I got a new goal. I need to get on tour. Mm. So, once I got on tour, it's like, I did this easy. Let me do another one. So, then I got on another tour. So, then after that, it was like, I took the summer off. Last summer, I took off and I traveled with my family, just did stuff. And that's when I, um, that's when I finally really started to look at it. Like, damn, I hit 10 cities. I got a number one new release, a number one book on Amazon. <laughs> You know, like, I just sold over a thousand books, like, on my own. And, um, that's when the music came. <laughs>